So since the first report that ivermectin could reverse multidrug resistance in 1996, and yet we still don't see this drug being used in cancer protocols. I'd like to have a discussion about some commonly known drugs that we are discovering alternative uses for. And in particular, I want to talk about ivermectin. So we all know that there's been some controversy over the use of ivermectin over the past few years. Um, but we're going to talk about what it has been used for, when it was discovered, um, how it's used, and then some exciting new things that are being learned. So I, I'm going to talk about ivermectin and I'm going to mention a couple of other drugs in relation to their use for cancer. Uh, chemotherapy is one of the standard methods of treatment of malignant tumors, and it aims to cause lethal damage to cellular structures, mainly the DNA of cells, which is the powerhouse and the brains of the cells. Noteworthy, in recent years, discoveries of novel anti-cancer agents from well-known antibiotics have opened up new treatment pathways for several cancer diseases. Um, so this first uh, study that I'm looking at is from 2019, published in um, PubMed, and uh, they were looking at new applications for the antibiotics doxycycline. We're all pretty familiar with that one being used for tick-borne diseases like Lyme disease. Selenomycin, monensin, and ivermectin, as they are known to show anti-tumor activity. But they have not yet been introduced into standard chemotherapy for cancer. To date, these agents have been used for the treatment of a broad spectrum of bacterial and parasitic infectious diseases and are widely available. The data clearly show that these antibiotics should be recognized in the near future as novel agents able to eradicate cancer cells and cancer stem cells across several cancer types, and we're going to talk about those. So this is a second study from 2021, also in, um, it was in Pharmacological Research Journal and published online uh, through uh, PubMed. So ivermectin has powerful anti-tumor effects, including the inhibition of proliferation, so that's the multiplying of cells, metastasis, which is the spread of cancer cells, and angiogenic activity, which is cancer cells bring in their own blood supply. They make their own blood vessels to bring in nutrients that they need to feed the cancer cells. So they have found uh, anti-tumor effects in a variety of cancer cells, and we'll talk about those. And um, it may be related to the regulation of multiple signaling pathways, and they discuss a lot of them. I'm not going, going to go into the deep science of all that. Um, but for the most part, it's through something called PAC-1 kinase. Um, ivermectin promotes programmed cancer cell death, including uh, apoptosis, which is where the cells burst, autophagy, which is where the, uh, the immune system eats the cells, and pyroptosis, which is in inflammation. Um, in, they call them inflammasomes, come in and destroy the cells. Um, ivermectin can also inhibit tumor stem cells, so cancer stem cells, and interestingly, can reverse multi-drug resistance. So uh, a lot of times when we have people or animals who are uh, undergoing chemotherapy, they will go into remission and then the cancer will come back with a vengeance and they'll be resistant to the chemotherapy drugs that are being used. And ivermectin, in a lot of instances, can reverse that drug resistance, which is really important to make these drugs still viable for use. Um, and it exerts its optimal effect when used in combination with other chemotherapy drugs. So ivermectin by itself is not going to have these uh, great effects that we're seeing in these studies, but when combined with other things, it, it can be very beneficial. And so you may remember that over the past ooh, probably 
decade maybe. Um, there have been a lot of studies using fenbendazole, which is another dewormer, uh, antiparasitic from an, another class of drugs. But that has been talked about and been used a lot in uh, cancer protocols, particularly in animals, but also in people. And that is um, an old school sheep dewormer that's been around for a very, very long time. All right, so ivermectin is an antiparasitic drug that is widely used for the treatment of many parasitic diseases, such as river blindness, elephantiasis, and scabies. Um, a Japanese scientist, Satoshi Omura, and an Irish scientist, William Campbell, won the 2015 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for the discovery of the ex excellent efficacy of ivermectin against parasitic diseases, both in animals and people. Recently, ivermectin has been reported to inhibit the proliferation of several tumor cells by regulating multiple signaling pathways, and that suggests that ivermectin may be an anti-cancer drug with great potential. Yay! Um, but we're going to kind of discover why it's not being more widely studied as we go through this. Um, so in addition to ivermectin, the Current avermectin family members include selamectin, doramectin, and moxidectin. And I talk a lot about moxidectin toxicity and uh, problems that we see with that drug, uh, particularly neurologically. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of it. And this particular study was looking at ivermectin because they say it is currently the most successful avermectin family drug and was approved by the FDA, FDA for use in humans in 1970. Eight. That is how far back this drug goes. Um, and that's part of the problem with it because it's off patent and anybody can make it, sell it, distribute it, and it's very cheap, very cheap. So for pharmaceutical companies, um, a lot of times we have to follow the money and we have to look at why would we want to do more research into a drug that people can get for a couple of bucks when uh, there are newer drugs, which may or may not be bigger and better, uh, but cost thousands of dollars for a dose of chemo. Um, so I think that's a lot of why we're not seeing more studies because again, been approved for use in humans since 1978. So here's a little bit of the science here, science, for those of you who would like that. It activates the glutamate-gated chloride channels in the parasite, causes a large amount of chloride ion, so salt, sodium chloride, uh, influx, and uh, hyperpolarization of the nerves, um, leading to a release of GABA, and that destroys the nerves and the nerve transmission of muscle cells induces the paralysis of the muscles to kill parasites. Now, this is where we see animals who have problems with this particular class of drugs um, and a lot of the other antiparasitic drugs is that they are supposed to target the nerve system of the parasite, but some animals are particularly... Um, sensitive to it and we it's we don't always know which ones and that's why sometimes we see neurologic side effects in animals okay um so ivermectin not only has strong effects on parasites, but it also has potential antiviral effects. It blocks the nuclear transport of viral proteins, very important, and exerts antiviral activity against the AIDS virus, HIV-1, and dengue viruses. Uh, and recent studies also pointed out that it has a promising inhibitory effect on the SARS-CoV-2 virus, um, but then it was banned for use. So... I don't know. Follow the money. That's all I can say. Um, in addition, ivermectin shows potential for clinical application in asthma and neurologic diseases. Recently, scientists have discovered that ivermectin has a strong anti-cancer effect. Um, so since the first report that ivermectin could reverse multidrug resistance in 1996, and yet we still don't see this drug being used in cancer protocols, um, a few relevant studies have emphasized the potential use of ivermectin as a new cancer treatment. Since 1996, that's a long time that we've known this and we're not using it. Um, the specific mechanism of ivermectin-mediated uh, cellular toxicity in tumor cells is unclear. So they have, there's a lot of science in this paper where they talk about different mechanisms, but they don't know all of them and they haven't elucidated them for every single um, cancer cell mechanism. Um, 
and here's where they kind of allude to what I've been saying, as the cost of the research and development of new anti-cancer drugs continues to increase, drug repositioning has become increasingly important. Drug repositioning refers to the development of new drug indications that have been approved for clinical use. For some older drugs like ivermectin that are widely used for their original indications, and to have clinical data and safety information, drug repositioning allows them to be developed via a cheaper and faster cycle and to be used more effectively in clinical use clinically. Except we're not. All right, so we're going to talk about some of the different cancers. Breast cancer. These are human studies. There's a couple of animal studies thrown in here as well, but remember a lot of these cancers um, that we study and we see in humans, we're using animal models a lot of times to get the research done. So breast cancer is a malignant tumor produced by gene mutation in breast epithelial cells caused by multiple carcinogens. The incidence of breast cancer has increased each year. It has become one of the female malignant tumors with the highest incidence globally. On average, a new case is diagnosed every 18 seconds worldwide. That is shocking. After treatment with ivermectin, the proliferation of multiple breast cancer cell lines was significantly reduced. And, a, and one study showed that ivermectin could inhibit the proliferation of canine breast tumor cell lines by blocking the cell cycle. So see, they, a lot of times they're using animal models to look at what can be done for humans as well. Um, and recent studies have also found that ivermectin could promote the death of tumor cells by regulating the tumor microenvironment in breast cancer. So their microenvironment is where all the nutrients lie that, that feed the cells, and ivermectin can um, disrupt and change that microenvironment so that the cells are not getting nutrition. Um, ivermectin regulates the tumor microenvironment and mediates immunogenic cell death, which may be a new direction for research exploring anti-cancer mechanisms in the future. So we're going to move on to digestive system cancers. Gastric cancer is one of the most common malignant tumors worldwide. In the past year, this is 2021, more than 1 million patients with gastric cancer have been diagnosed worldwide. Um, one study showed that ivermectin could significantly inhibit the proliferation of gastric cancer cells, both in the laboratory and in, uh, in real life. Um, ivermectin inhibited the proliferation of multiple cancers, including colorectal cancer cell lines and promoted cell, cancer cell death. Hepatocellular carcinoma, that's liver cancer, is the fourth leading cause of cancer death worldwide. Approximately 80% of cases of liver cancer are caused by hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus infection in people. Well, earlier in the paper, they said that uh, ivermectin has antiviral effects. So if it has antiviral effects, it's going to work against those uh, hepatitis viruses as well as help kill off the cancer cells that are produced in relation. And we really don't know the cause of a lot of cancers, so there may be a lot of other cancers that are secondary to um, viral infections. And actually, we're going to talk about another one later on in this paper. Um, okay, cholangiocarcinoma is a malignant tumor that originates in the bile duct inside and outside the liver. One of my kitty cats, I had a... Um, a uh, calico kitty cat who had cholangiocarcinoma. It was in her bile duct. Um, experiments found that uh, ivermectin inhibited the proliferation or growth and multiplication of cholangiocarcinoma cells. We should have known that back then. Um, ivermectin shows potential for the treatment of tumors that are resistant to conventional chemotherapy drugs. Urinary system cancer. Renal cell carcinoma, so those are kidney cells, um, that's a fatal malignant tumor of the urinary system derived from kidney tubular epithelial cells. Um, its morbidity has increased by an average of 2% annually worldwide, and the clinical treatment effect is not satisfactory. In other words, they don't have a good treatment for it. Experiments confirmed that ivermectin could significantly, significantly inhibit the growth and reproduction of five different renal cell carcinoma cell lines without affecting the proliferation of normal kidney cells. Very important. 
Okay, prostate cancer. We all hear about that one every day. Uh, not so much in uh, dogs, but we do hear of it in dogs. Uh, very, very rare in other animals, but we definitely see it in dogs. Uh, it's derived from prostate epithelial cells. Its morbidity is second only to that of lung cancer among men in Western countries. Um, it was found that ivermectin could enhance the drug activity of the anti-androgen jug that is used in prostate cancer treatment and reverses the resistance of the prostate cancer cell line to another one of the drugs. So it's, again, reversing that drug resistance when we um, when the cancer goes in, comes back out of remission and decides to go crazy again. Interact Interestingly, ivermectin also restored the sensitivity of the triple negative breast cancer to the anti-estrogen drug tamoxifen, which also implies the potential for ivermectin to be used in endocrine therapy. So that would be um, hormonal therapy. Uh, ivermectin was also found to have a good inhibitory effect on the prostate cancer cell line. So hematological cancers, cancers of the blood cells. Leukemia is a type of malignant disease caused by abnormal uh, blood-producing stem cells. In an experiment designed to screen potential drugs for the treatment of leukemia, ivermectin preferentially killed leukemia cells at low concentrations without affecting normal blood cell uh, stem cells. It was also proven that ivermectin has a sy synergistic effect with uh, two anti-cancer drugs on the treatment of leukemia. Reproductive system cancer. Cervical cancer is one of the most common gynecological malignancies, and we don't see this in our animals, I think, because we've been spaying and removing the cervix for so many years so early on. Um, but in humans, approximately 530,000 new, new cases and 270,000 deaths worldwide each year, and the majority are caused by human papillomavirus infection. So again, here's another virus that is leading to a cancer. So how often should we be looking at something that has antiviral activity as also having anti-cancer activity? Um, ivermectin has uh, been proven to significantly inhibit the growth, reproduction, and migration of HeLa cells um, and promote death of, of those cancer cells. Ovarian cancer is another malignant cancer that lacks early clinical symptoms and has a poor therapeutic response. The five-year survival rate after diagnosis is approximately 47%. Uh, ivermectin inhibited the growth and spread of various ovarian cancer cell lines as well. Um, and ivermec ivermectin and paclitaxel have a synergistic effect on ovarian cancer. Combined treatment um, in the lab setting experiments almost completely inhibited tumor growth. Um, ivermectin can enhance the efficacy of cisplatin, which is chemotherapy, to improve the treatment of epithelial ovarian cancer. Again, why are we not looking at using these? Why are these not being incorporated into uh, cancer therapies when we've had this evidence for so many years? Brain glioma. Uh, glioma is the most common uh, tumor of the brain. Approximately 100,000 people worldwide are diagnosed with glioma every year. I've had two friends die of this. Glioblastoma is the deadliest. Uh, median survival time of only 14 to 17 months. Experiments show that ivermectin inhibited the growth and spread of human glioblastoma cells and induced cell death. Ivermectin could significantly in uh, inhibit the growth of the new uh, blood cells to feed the t or blood vessels to feed the tumor and ivermectin has the potential to resist tumor anti angiogenesis new uh, blood blood vessel growth and tumor spread unfortunately uh, there's something called the blood brain barrier which uh, keeps things from getting to your brain. So a lot of drugs we don't want to get to the brain, a lot of uh, chemicals we don't want to get to the brain. So there's this thing called the blood-brain barrier. And ivermectin cannot get past the blood-brain barrier. So the prospect of the use of ivermectin in the treatment of gliomas, unfortunately, is not optimistic. But um, I think with time, if they really studied it, they could find ways around that and maybe connect it with other molecules that would carry it across that blood-brain barrier. I'm not a sci research scientist, so I don't know. 
Respiratory system cancer. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma is a malignant tumor derived from the epithelial cells of the nasopharyngeal mucosa. So that's your airways, your, your sinus, your nose. Um, the incidence is obviously regional. Um, and Epstein-Barr virus infection is closely related. Again, a virus underlying cancer formation. In a study that screened drugs for the treatment of nasopharyngeal cancer, ivermectin significantly inhibited the development of nasopharyngeal carcinoma in nude mice at doses that were not toxic to normal thymocytes, which is uh, the cells of the thymus gland and the immune system. In addition, ivermectin also had a cell-killing effect on a variety of nasopharyngeal cancer cells in the lab. Lung cancer has the highest morbidity and mortality among cancers. Uh, one scientist found that ivermectin could significantly inhibit the proliferation of lung cancer cells. And in addition, ivermectin could reduce the metastasis or spread of lung cancer cells. Lung cancer likes to go to the brain. Uh, melanoma is the most common malignant skin tumor with a very high mortality rate. Uh, one scientist treated melanoma cells with ivermectin and found it could effectively inhibit melanoma activity. Its combination with a chemotherapy drug significantly increased anti-tumor activity. And ivermectin can also significantly reduce the lung metastasis of melanoma, so spread to the lungs, in animal experiments. And we do see melanoma in animals quite often, gray horses in particular but also see a lot in dogs and nail bed tumors. Um, ivermectin induces different programmed cell death patterns in different tumor cells. The main form of ivermectin-induced programmed cell death is apoptosis, where the cells burst. Uh, it's programmed cell death that is regulated by genes to maintain cell stability. Some more science here, science. Okay. Cancer stem cells, they're the cell population to, uh, similar to stem cells, um, which are the baby cells in the body. Uh, they're characteristics of self-renewal and differentia differentiation potential. Um, so cancer stem cells are like the baby cells and they can turn into other things. So stem cells have the ability to turn into cartilage cells or fat cells or muscle cells. Um, they're what we call undifferentiated as babies and and then they decide what they want to be when they grow up and they turn into that. So um, cancer stem cells are those baby cells that then grow into that cancer. Um, they're similar to stem cells in terms of function, but because of a lack of a negative feedback regulation me mechanism for stem cell self-renewal, their powerful proliferation or growth and multiplication and multi-directional differentiation abilities are unrestricted, which allows the cancer stem cells to maintain certain activities during chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And when the external environment is suitable, the cancer stem cells will rapidly proliferate to reactivate the formation and growth of tumors. So they have been widely recognized as the main cause of reoccurrence after treatment. So we kill those adult cells, but we're not killing off those stem cells, the baby ones that want to come back. Um, so one scientist evaluated the effect of ivermectin on the stem cells in the cancer stem cells in the breast cancer cell line. And the experimental results showed that ivermectin would preferentially target and inhibit cancer stem cells rich cell populations compared with other cell populations. Um, let's see, the self-renewal and differentiation ability of the stem cells in cancer stem cells were also significantly inhibited by ivermectin. This suggests that ivermectin may be used as a potential cancer stem cell inhibitor for cancer therapy. Why are we not doing this? So reversal of tumor multidrug resistance. MDR, or multidrug resistance of tumor cells, is the main cause of relapses and deaths after chemotherapy. Several studies have confirmed that ivermectin could reverse, reverse drug resistance, and in one experiment testing the effect of ivermectin on lymphocytic leukemia, ivermectin could be used as an inhibitor to affect uh, the drug resistance. In another experiment, ivermectin reversed the drug resistance of the vincristine-resistant colorectal cancer cell line, doxorubicin-resistant breast cancer cell line, and the chronic myelogenous leukemia cell line. The role of ivermectin 
in drug-resistant prostate cancer and drug-resistant cholangiocarcinoma has also been mentioned. These results indicate the significance of applying ivermectin for the treatment of chemotherapy patients with drug resistance. Uh, one experiment uh, found that ivermectin could significantly enhance the inhib inhibitory effects of drugs on lung cancer and colorectal cancer. Ivermectin combined with conventional chemotherapeutic drugs shows great potential for cancer treatment. The combination of drugs can increase efficacy, reduce toxicity, or delay drug resistance. Therefore, combination therapy is the most common method of chemotherapy. Ivermectin has a variety of different mechanisms of action in different cancers and its potential for synergistic effects and enhanced efficacy in combination therapy. Not only does ivermectin not overlap with other therapies in terms of its mechanism of action, but the fact that ivermectin has multiple targets suggests it is not easy to produce ivermectin resistance. Therefore, continued study and testing of safe and effective combination drug therapies is essential to maximize the anti-cancer effects of ivermectin. I missed a page. Okay. Malignant tumors are one of the most serious diseases that threaten human and animal health and social development today, and chemotherapy is one of the most important methods for the treatment of malignant tumors. In recent years, many new chemotherapeutic drugs have entered the clinic, but tumor cells are prone to drug resistance and obvious adverse reactions to these drugs. We have seen many. Therefore, the development of new drugs that can overcome resistance, improve anti-cancer activity, and reduce side effects is an urgent problem to be solved in chemotherapy. Drug repositioning is a shortcut to accelerate the development of anti-cancer drugs. As mentioned above, the broad-spectrum antiparasitic drug ivermectin which is wide, widely used in the field of parasite control, has many advantages that suggest it is worth developing as a potential new anti-cancer drug. Ivermectin selectively inhibits the proliferation of tumors at a dose that is not toxic to normal cells and can reverse the drug resistance of tumors. Importantly, ivermectin is an established drug used for the treatment of parasitic diseases such as river blindness and elephantiasis. It has been widely used in humans and animals for many years and its various pharmacological properties, including long and short-term toxicological effects and drug metabolism characteristics are very clear. In healthy volunteers, the dose was, dose was in human, the dose was increased to two milligrams per kilogram and no serious adverse reactions were found, while tests in animals such as mice, rats, and rabbits found that the median lethal dose of ivermectin was 10 to 50 milligrams per kilogram, very high dose. In addition, ivermectin has also been proven to show good permeability in tumor tissues. Unfortunately, there have been no reports of clinical trials of ivermectin as an anti-cancer drug. Ivermectin can enhance the sensitivity of chemotherapeutic drugs, reduce the production of resistance. Therefore, it should be used in combination with other drugs to achieve the best effect, while the specific medication plan used to combine ivermectin with other drugs remains to be explored. So I don't know of any veterinarians using ivermectin as part of their chemotherapy or cancer protocols. I do know that a lot of people are starting to use uh, fenbendazole and there actually are social media groups dedicated to the use of fenbendazole in uh, fighting certain cancers. I have had some clients use it uh, for lung cancer in particular, but some others. Um, and uh, it's been pretty effective. So we don't know where this will go, but uh, I would hope that these older drugs that are inexpensive, easy to produce, uh, really could be studied further to see what we can use them for. And, uh, you know, maybe when we have these animals who are coming out of remission and becoming resistant, I'm th in my mind, I'm thinking lymphoma, which they really didn't discuss. Um, but maybe this is something that, that we should be looking at or that we should be asking our, our cancer researchers to be looking at. So... Food for thought.